Hi, I am Dr. Selvaraj, Professor of Surgery at Manipal University College, Malaysia. Welcome back to my series of surgical teaching video casts. These are meant mainly for undergraduate medical students doing the surgical clux rotation and all the surgical trainees as well. Today in this episode, I am going to discuss one more operative surgery that is surgery for fissure in ANO, <coughs> that is lateral internal sphincterotomy. So the aim of surgery in chronic anal fissure in ANO is to either abolish or reduce the internal anal sphincter pressure so that the fissure can heal. <coughs> the surgeries are number one, lateral internal sphincterotomy. That, that could be done either by open method or closed method. Or we can do fissurectomy with anal advancement flap. This is done if there is low anal sphincter tone or failure of lateral internal sphincterotomy, which was done already. The third surgery was large anal dilatation, but because of high incidence of sphincter damage and subsequent fecal incontinence, nowadays we are not doing this large anal dilatation at all. So coming to the lateral anal internal sphincterotomy, the indications are you have to do only for chronic fissure in ANO and never for acute fissure in ANO, which can be managed conservatively. The contraindications is borderline sphincter function or if the sphincter tone is very low, we should not do this sphincter automy. Anesthesia, you can give GA, you can give spinal, you can give epidural or even local anesthesia. Position, you can keep the patient either in prone jackknife position or lithotomy position. Before doing surgery, you have to explain what are the risks of surgery or complications of surgery and you have to get an informed concern from the patients. <coughs> complications are the commonest complication is injury to the external anal sphincter resulting in incontinence, fecal incontinence. The incidence is almost 5%. Recurrence of the fissure can occur in 5% of the patient. Wound infection in another 1% of the patient. So you have to explain all these things and you have to get an informed concern from your patients. Pre-op preparation, you should do digital rectal examination or parectal examination and proctoscopy to rule out possibility of Crohn's, TB, ulcerative colitis, or even anal malignancy, the cause for the chronic fissure. You have to give enema only on the day of surgery. So coming to the open lateral internal anal sphincterotomy, that is, this sphincterotomy can be done either open method or closed method. First, let me explain the open method. The position of the patient, I told you this is the prone jackknife position or this is the lithotomy position. Then you have to expose the area, introduce an anal speculum inside. This is bivalved speculum or this is a, a single speculum. Either of these you can use then you can identify the fissure which is usually at 6 o'clock position here. This is also 6 o'clock. The 6 o'clock position you have to identify. Then you have to make a 
radial incision in the perianal skin below the inferior border of the internal sphincter, usually at 3 o'clock position. See here and here also you are seeing 3 o'clock position, you have to make a radial incision. Then you have to dissect the <coughs> anal skin from underlying internal sphincter with scissors completely all around. See, this is the incision. Then you have to put a scissors and undermine this anal skin, anal mucosa and anal skin. This you have to undermine. All around, you have to free this anoderm from the underlying internal sphincter muscle. Then the next step is you have to cut the internal sphincter. You can divide the internal sphincter muscle fibers with a scalper after holding this in internal sphincter with Alice forceps. Then you can leave the wound open. You need not suture it. Automatically by itself this will suture. But while you are cutting, you have to be very careful. You have to cut only internal sphincter and not the external sphincter. Internal sphincter will be relatively white in color that you have to cut. So coming to the close uh, uh, lateral uh, internal sphincterotomy, the position is same, either a prone jackknife position or lithotomy position. Then you have to feel the inter sphincteric groove with your index finger, introduce an anal speculum first, identify the fissure, <coughs> usually at 6 o'clock position. If you are introducing the anal speculum and then if you retract it, this internal sphincter muscle will become, I mean, <coughs> it will stand out. You can easily feel a depression between this internal sphincter and the external sphincter. Feel the intersphincteric plane as a gap or as a depression. This is what you are seeing here in this picture. But you have to make the internal sphincter taut first by opening the anal speculum. Then you have to infiltrate the area with local anesthetic. The anal lining is lifted away from the internal sphincter by infiltration of local anesthetic into submucosal plate. That is what you are seeing here. The needle is just below that, this is the mucosa, this is the internal sphincter, and this is the external sphincter. So first you have to infiltrate in the submucosal area in between the mucosa and the internal sphincter muscle. Then you have to infiltrate local anesthetic into the intersphincteric plane, that is in between this internal sphincter and this external sphincter. Again, you have to infiltrate this local anesthetic. This is what you are seeing here. Apart from giving either general anesthesia, spinal, you can infiltrate this area with this local anesthetic also. Then you have to poke a scalpel in the submucosal plane. So poke a cataract knife in perianal skin in the submucosal plane at 3 o'clock position until it is until its point is just above the dentate line. So you have to poke it here, you have to poke it here, and you have to go just above the dentate line. You have to go there. Now rotate the cutting edge of the knife laterally and then do internal syndrome by pushing the knife outwards. Because here the knife is lying in submucosal plane, so you have to cut the internal sphincter by moving it laterally. There is an another method where you can introduce the knife in the intersphincteric plane and do internal sphincterotomy by pushing the knife inwards. Now, here you have to push the knife outwards. Here, because here it is, the knife is in submucosal plane. But here 
the knife is in intercentric plane so here you have to move it inwards but usually i won't do this procedure because <coughs> accidentally we may cut this external sphincter also i always do this method only where in addition to this i will put my finger inside the anal canal to safeguard this mucosa then i will push this knife towards my finger in the anus yeah like this then only this internal sphincter will be cut this mucosa won't get damaged if i am going to introduce my finger inside the anal canal that is what i used to do then after doing this internal sphincterotomy you have to feel for a depression at the area of this puncture and then you can excise the sentinel pile mass press the area of sphincterotomy to assess the completeness of sphincterotomy so if you are pressing this area number 1 you are achieving hemostasis number 2 you are making the sphincterotomy complete whatever muscle fiber is still there by pressing it okay it will turn then finally you have to excise the large sentinel pile mass that is fissure with the sentinel pile with hypertrophied papillae this is the triad all these things should also be excised now so what are the complications of this lateral internal sphincterotomy so incontinence is the commonest complication this may be for flatters or liquid stools occur in 5% of the patient but it is temporary and lasts for 2 to 3 months only if incontinence lasts longer than this this may be because of injury to external sphincter accidentally during internal sphincterotomy bleeding is an another complication and if it is severe and persistent that need to be controlled in operation theater wound infection also can occur in 1% of the patient fistula is a rare complication <coughs> some of the patients can also go for acute retention of urine post op care daily if we have to give the patient sits bath after each bowel movement to clean that area digital rectal exam at discharge and after a week to prevent adhesion between raw areas anal pack is surgeon's preference i keep non adherent sponge to tamponade for few hours local application of lignocaine jelly can be done oral analgesic tablets as needed for pain mild oral laxatives for 2 to 3 weeks post op must be given patients can be mobilized immediately after surgery the time of work or sick leave you can give for one week time for these patients so there is an another procedure called fissurectomy with anal advancement flap so this is indicated in fissures with low anal sphincter tone or <coughs> a case of failed lateral internal sphincterotomy fissure at 6 o'clock position is excised along with the sentinel pile and the hypertrophied papillae this should be done at first then you have to do that anal advancement flap the resulting defect is covered with full thickness anal skin flap which is rotated forward and sutured in place this is what you can see this is the raw area which should be covered by the anal flap but you should not do any posterior internal sphincterotomy for fear of keyhole deformity here also you can see this is the skin flap skin advancement flap so thank you very much for watching this video if you think that these videos are really helpful to you kindly share it in your social media kindly 
click the bell button also to get notified regarding my latest uploads. Thank you once again for watching this video. Let us meet in an, yet another episode. Until then, bye-bye.